Greetings and salutations, Internet. This is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us on the web at alamomusic.com. So today, we're here to answer a question that has uh, foiled the Internet for many, many years. We're going to take this. This is a brand new Fender Stratocaster Elite. And we're here to answer the question, can you make this sound like this? So, I have heard in the store, and I have read online on the various you know, blogs and forums and whatnot that there are, the, this old adage. And it is that you can make a Strat sound like a Les Paul, but you can't make a Les Paul sound like a Strat. So, we're here to answer that question for you today. Can you? Let's talk about these two guitars because right now these are both very modern interpretations of these classic guitars from Fender and from Gibson. Probably, arguably, the most iconic electric guitars that have ever been. Maybe, you know, slightly leaving out the Telecaster and the SG, but I would bet you money, folding money, that if you ask the average person who's not a musician to describe an electric guitar, they're going to describe one of these either the Stratocaster or the Les Paul. People who aren't guitar players, who aren't musicians at all, typically know a Stratocaster and a Les Paul. They are famous, but they are otherwise vastly different from one another other than being electric guitars. So let's talk about them first of all. We'll start with the oldest one first, and that's Les Paul. It came out before the Stratocaster did. The Les Paul is a set neck design. Okay, so the neck is glued into the body. The body is a thick slab of mahogany with a cap of maple. In this case, it's beautiful flamed maple uh, with a heritage cherry burst on it. It features a 24.75 inch scale um, and it has two humbucking pickups, a three to a side headstock at a uh, angle here. I think it's 17 degrees, I forget. Um, and it's been in production since the 50s. Bound neck, Parallelogram inlays, three-way toggle switch, two volumes, two tone controls. In essence, that's the Les Paul. Now, there are variations on the Les Paul. Um, you've got classics and traditionals and standards like this one and various custom shop models and whatnot that might have some differences in the pickups that are used and some other options like this one that has dip switches and push-pull pots and whatnot to make it a very modern guitar. But that's the basis of it. Now, let's talk about the basic design of a Stratocaster. It's vastly different. Uh, the, the tone woods aren't even the same, particularly in this case. So this is an, an American Elite Stratocaster. Uh, it features a double cutaway uh, Stratocaster body that is ergonomically shaped to fit your arm and your belly with a cut there. Uh, this is made of ash. It's usually either ash or alder wood. It has a bolt on neck instead of a set neck design. The neck is made of maple uh, with either a rosewood or maple fingerboard. In this case, it's just a maple fingerboard. It has three single coils, a five-way toggle switch, one volume, two tone controls, and a vibrato bridge as opposed to a fixed tail piece like on this one. The headstock is pretty much straight in line with the neck. It doesn't bend back and it has six uh, tuners to a side uh, with a straight string pull over the headstock. The scale length is 25 and a half inches. And <clears throat> everything that I just said about this guitar and this guitar are going to come into how they sound and how they play. So I'm going to spoil it a little bit here at the beginning, but I'm going to show you through playing my point. You cannot make a Stratocaster sound exactly like a Les Paul, and you cannot make a Les Paul sound exactly like a Stratocaster, but you can get kind of close. Why? Let's talk about the Strat first. Now, the Stratocaster has one up on the Les Paul in that there are other options out there. You can get this with humbucking pickups, you know, um, as opposed to single coils. But this is the classic Strat design. This is what we're going to go with. Um, and when people say that you can make this sound like a Les Paul, here's what they mean. They mean that you can get a crunchy, overdriven, thick, sustaining tone out of it. That's what most people associate with the Les Paul. Why? Well, it comes to its design, as opposed to this, which has uh, typically a chimier, brighter, thinner, quacky sound to it. That's, that's the description of a Strat. So we're trying to get from a quacky, uh, bright, chimey sound to a thicker, 
robust, sustaining, overdriven sound. How are we going to do that? Well, let's talk about why we have the chime first. We have the chime for a number of reasons. It goes to the body wood, the neck, how the neck's mounted, the bridge, and the pickups. That's basically what's giving us our design. A bolt-on neck design is a very solid, robust design. Okay, uh, it's not going anywhere. It's affixed to the body, um, but it's not part of the body. It's affixed to the body, and so the trans the the transfer of vibrations um, that I are either contributing or robbing vibrations from the strings comes down to how good this joint is, how well it's affixed to this, the vibrating mass of the metal, a bunch of other things that deal with the physics of what's taking place acoustically in this instrument. You also have the strings connected to this vibrato piece. Now, you can have the tremolo uh, down on the, the deck, basically down to the body of the guitar. You can have it blocked or whatever. It's set up as a floating tremolo, and that is going to have an effect on how the strings reverberate, the vibrations that it adds or takes away from the strings. The pickups are basically a microphone picking up what the strings are doing and interpreting that into sound. So, in this case, they are three single coil pickups, noiseless in this particular case, with a dummy coil underneath to get rid of the hum. But they are going to pick up this small section of the vibrating mass of the string, based upon these planes that we can mix through a five-way switch. One reason that you will never be able to get a Les Paul to sound like a Stratocaster is this guy right here. This middle pickup is one of the things that gives a Stratocaster its sound because it gives you the second and the fourth position where you can combine these two. It's a famous sound, we know it, we, we recognize it, and, uh, and uh, Les Paul doesn't have a middle pickup. So you can kind of get close, but you can't get that. Um, and of course, a single coil, because it's picking up less vibrating mass of the string, is going to have a chimier, brighter, more trebly tone um, than a humbucking pickup's going to be. And we've talked about that in another video. You should check that out, the difference between these two pickups. But that's what is in basically going to give us the sound of this guitar. Let's look at the Les Paul now to compare what's giving us the tone out of it. Okay, so here is the quintessential Les Paul. This is a 2019 standard. Um, and like every Les Paul before it, it has a basic design, which is a slab of mahogany. It's rather thick, actually. A cap of maple, a set in mahogany neck, like we talked about. Um, and these two aspects, along with the stop tail, are going to give this guitar one of its quintessential aspects of tone. And that is the sustain that it has. Um, it's very rigid. So you can hit a note, and because the strings are anchored here into this br bridge and tailpiece, which is anchored to the body, um, and the neck is set in and basically a part of the body now, and because you have this thick mass between the maple and the mahogany, that string is just going to vibrate and vibrate and vibrate and vibrate because there's very little robbing the string of its vibrations. So you get a lot of sustain. The other thing that gives this guitar its quintessential tone is twofold. Now you have the mahogany body and the maple, which contributes to the sound. But in my opinion, and you keyboard commandos on the internet can roast me if you want to, the bigger factor is giving this the throaty, th thick tone that it has is the combination of the humbucking pickups and the shorter scale. And we've talked about scale length in another video, but let me break it down really simply for you because we talked about it between these two instruments and it's very, very important. The scale length goes from the bridge to the nut, okay? It determines where you're placing the frets and the um, vibrating length of the string. That vibrating length, if, as it changes, changes the harmonies of the string. It changes where we're going to place the pickups. And that changes what the pickups are picking up. So they're hearing a different part of the string, which is vibrating differently. So if you took a Les Paul and you made it longer scale like a Stratocaster, it's going to have an inherently brighter tone to it because there's a longer distance, uh, slightly increased tension, tighter feel on the strings, and the pickups would be in a different place, picking up a different area of the string that's vibrating. That's how it works. The pickups in these case are humbucking pickups. So they are picking up um, a wider range of string mass as well. And what they do is they're canceling out that 60 cycle hum that we're used to hearing in a single coil pickup. They're picking up a wide band of string, um, and the combination of those two things kind of filters out some of the high end, increases the low and mid range, and gives us a lot more output. That's what's 
traditional with single coils. Now, what's cool about these with the Les Paul standard is that we do have push-pull pots that are going to give us an option to split these. A coil split basically means we're going to turn off one of these coils in the humbucker and make it a single coil sound. But because of the design and the scale, we're still not going to get the same sound as a Stratocaster. Okay? But we're going to get a close, usable, single coil sound. So what we're going to demonstrate here in a second is you cannot make a Les Paul sound like a Strat. You can get a usable single coil sound, and it's an extremely versatile guitar, but it doesn't sound like a Stratocaster. And on the Stratocaster, what we can do is we can put it through this Princeton, and we can turn on this uh, overdrive pedal. We're using a, uh, this new Fender Santa Ana overdrive today, and we can, uh, we can mess with the EQ, and we can increase the gain uh, in order to get a crunchier sound with more output and increase the sustain and take off some of the highs and add some of the lows, but we're not really making it sound like a Les Paul. And here's why. You're starting with two very different sounding guitars and they're very different sounding guitars by design. And so if you're starting with X, you can do a whole bunch, but you're never going to truly get to Y. That's basically what's happening here. So if you don't believe me, check it out, and we'll start with this first so we can see if we can make it sound like a Strat and vice versa. Okay, so 20, 000, uh, 2019 Gibson Les Paul Standard. We're gonna start with the bridge pickup, okay? Uh, when we put, pull out the volume pot, it's going to give us a coil split, so we're going to get the outside single coil. Um, and this guitar is equipped with a push-pull on the uh, tone for the bridge, which will actually change the uh, coil split from the inside to the outside and vice versa. Um, and so we'll demonstrate that a little bit because the two pickups in the middle position with the pot pulled giving you the two inside coils in single coil mode is about the closest you can get to that kind of Stratocaster middle pickup sound, um, but still not quite. So anyways, bear with me, you'll see what I mean. So neck pickup first. And this is a clean sound going through a Princeton Reverb, um, vintage modified amp, and uh, right now the overdrive is off. See, let's pick a famous sound. Let's check out the bridge. both together and we'll change the coils. So, you get a lot of usable single coil sounds, if you don't mind all of the switching. It makes the standard an extremely versatile guitar, and you still have, you know, this.
All right, so it's still Les Paul. It gives you a lot of great single coil sounds, but let's listen to the Strat so you can see how kind of close but not quite that is. And then we're gonna put it through some gain and I'm gonna mess with the pedal and kind of bring up the mids and the lows and bring down the highs and change the presence and all of that and you, so you can see what I'm talking about. So, All right, so we have a lot more options on this. Um, we've got the middle sounds, okay? There's our bridge. There's our neck. Already very different from the Les Paul. And then we've got a middle sound, uh, like we do with the Les Paul, but in this particular case, it's not the two pickups, it's just the middle, which is his own sound. Now I can kind of cheat with this one and get that bridge and neck. All right, so we've got the sound that a Strat's known for, right? That's what it's known for. Can it do the other stuff? We don't have any switching to give us a humbucker. We can't turn a single coil into a humbucker. We can use the S1 switch on this since it's an elite model to make a combination of all of these. But if you've just got a Strat at home without that, then you can't just turn a single coil into a humbucking pickup. What you can do if you want more gain is you can use a pedal or turn your amp up if it's, a, or change the channel on it and get. We've got good sustain. Part of that's from the overdrive and the gain that we're getting, right? But you can hear it's not thick like the Les Paul was because of the design, because of the pickups, because of the scale length. So what can we do? Well, I can bring down the treble. I can bring up my mids and my bass, adjust my presence, maybe increase the drive a bit, and I can sort of thicken that up. Here's the thing, if you're playing in a band, from experience, those of you who play will probably know that if you start increasing your gain, it has an effect on your EQ and where you sit in the mix. If you bring your gain down, um, you actually can project a little bit more and your instrument becomes a little bit more musical. Um, this happens with compression as well. If you have a compressor pedal, you can take that compression all the way up and you can control your highs and lows and increase sustain, but you lose musicality of the instrument, the voice of the instrument, it becomes pretty sterile if you use too much. There's, there's balance to all of this. Um, and if you listen to a lot of those old records, you listen to like Angus Young on his, on his uh, SG, he didn't have the gain up all of the way. He had this great sound, but there, there was this, this musicality to the tone that he was getting. So we can bring this up, but we have to be careful that we don't sterilize the instrument so much in the attempt to increase the gain and the, the low end of the instrument, trying to counteract what it actually is on its own. So what have we learned today? That you should buy both guitars. Uh, <laughs> no, here's the point. All of these guitars, these two and, and everything else in between that's out there has its own voice. And what I would stress to you is if you like a particular sound, if you like the sound of a Les Paul and you prefer that, 
then you should buy a Les Paul. If you prefer the sound of a Telecaster or a Strat or an SG or a PRS or whatever it is, then you should buy that instrument. If you don't have that right now and you're trying to get that sound, there are things that you can do, but at a certain point, you're going to reach a, a, a point of frustration with what you have. Uh, and this is where a lot of us guitar players like myself come to, and this is why we own multiple instruments, because they do different things. So if I'm going to be playing as the world's most okayest guitar player, um, and I have a set list, I know from those songs what guitar I'm going to grab that day, or guitars, depending upon the songs where I might have to switch. Um, and it's, you know, you can... You can, if you want to, fiddle with your amp and your pedals and everything right in the middle of a gig um, as you go from song to song to song. But, you know, I think the point is that these are made different. They sound different. They have their own personality. Um, and it's really great. You have the, the best aspect of the instrument when you let those personalities come through on their own and play to the strengths of the instrument and the equipment that you have and understand what it's for. So... Bottom line, can you make a Les Paul sound like a Strat? Eh, you can get single coil sounds. Can you make a Strat sound like a Les Paul? Eh, you can make it sound like a game Strat. And that's a cool sound on its own. So, as always, I wanna thank you for watching. Uh, down below, there's a comment area. You can you know, go ahead and flame me all you want down there and tell me I'm an idiot or tell me uh, that I know what I'm talking about. Uh, but either way, we want you to subscribe, turn on your notifications, interact with us, and uh, help you find the best gear to suit your needs. Thanks for watching. What's up you guys? We're here at Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas, and we're very excited to announce the 30th Annual Guitar Wars. The theme this year is Shred the Halls, and it's taking place at Sam's Burger Joint right here in San Antonio on December 11th at 7 p.m. To enter, we want you to post a 30 second to one minute video of you playing and post it on Instagram and tag us at Alamo Music. We want you to use the hashtags Shred the Halls, Alamo Music, Play a Note, and Guitar Wars 30. There are three categories. We got electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and bass. Three winners from each category will receive an awesome prize, and the top player from each one has a chance to be featured on our YouTube channel. We want everybody to enter. There are no limitations on genres, but your submissions are due by December 1st. There are always some great players there, but we're looking forward to seeing some new faces. Show us what you got. Is that okay? Okay. good? Hey everyone, I want to thank you for watching the videos that we produce. We put these out to help you choose the right guitar, um, understand some of the options that are out there, and to showcase some of the latest models that you may not get the opportunity to play in your local music store. If you have benefited or enjoyed watching any of our videos, then I want to tell you how you can help us to make more. We have created a new t-shirt just for guitar nuts like you and me. It's this. It says... I'm a guitar nut. So if you're like me, you are a guitar nut. And if you're also like me, walking around naked is probably an offense. So we want you to have this shirt. Follow the link, go to our website. These are going to be limited time and uh, you can put in a pre-order for it now. They will be shipping soon. Once they're gone, they're gone. So follow the link below and get your guitar nut shirt that only you and other guitar players will understand with a knowing week. Thanks again for watching.